Hi, I'm Jordana Michelle, lesbian love coach and creator of Women Wanting Women, the place to be to learn the secrets of how women attract each other and to find and keep lesbian love. And there are links below if you want free access to some of what I teach there. But in this video, I want to talk about what makes love last. And this is really important because when we find someone that we're excited about, who we're attracted to, who we want to be in a relationship with, who is actually excited about us and attracted to us and wants to be in a relationship with us, then the best thing we can do is be good at having a relationship so that we make the relationship last, so that we stay together. Because love is the best. And the longer we can make a relationship last, the longer that love lasts, the more precious it becomes. The more two people invest in each other, you know, love is hard. So the longer two people are together, the more fights that, that, that we're gonna have, the more, the more fights we're gonna overcome. The more times people fight, the more they get back together and the more they overcome their differences and the more you make up and break up, the more you really can trust the love that you have, that it's gonna survive each fight. You know, before the first fight, for example, you don't know if the couple is gonna survive it, but by the time you've had 110 fights with someone, you know that even when you're fighting, that you still are crazy about each other and that you're gonna get through it the way that you've always gotten through it. And the more two people know that about each other, the more that, that two people can make the relationship last together, the more precious it becomes, the more, valuable, the more valuable it becomes. And love really is the greatest, and that's one of the most wonderful things that we can do in life is to share relationships like that with someone. And so it's really important when, we're, when we finally find someone that we can share that with, it's really important to know how to make love last because relationships are hard. Love isn't something we feel, love is something that we do. And it's important to know what to do. It's important to understand what the tools are. So there are three pillars for making love last. The first pillar is accepting the woman we're with completely as she is. Now, if we can accept the woman we're with completely as she is, then we can basically eliminate like 50% of the fights that we'll ever have with her. Because the truth is that no matter who we're with, nobody is perfect. There's always gonna be some amount of disagreement that we have with another person. But if we can just accept the person fundamentally for who they are, then we can eliminate so many of the fights that we have with, with that person. We can eliminate all the fights that we have just based on the fact that we have inherent differences. If we can just accept that you're this way and I'm that way and we're not gonna agree on that thing or I'm just not gonna like that thing about you, then okay, that's fine. There's no reason to just keep fighting about it. So the more we can accept the person we're with completely for who she is, the more we can really eliminate fights that we have with them about everything that has to do with that. Because the truth is, people don't change. So if we're fighting with them, expecting her to change, then that's just us creating misery for ourselves because it's not gonna work anyway and it's a pointless fight that we shouldn't be choosing. And if we're with someone and we can't fundamentally 100% accept her for who she is, then we shouldn't be with her. We shouldn't choose that person. A lot of times it's, it, people choose to be with the wrong person because when, 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 when dating, there is such a fear of being alone that what can often happen is when people are dating, they're more worried about whether they're gonna be chosen than they are about whether this is someone that they should have chosen in the first place. We need to be really curious when we're dating. We need to be really curious when we're meeting someone to figure out who she really is because we need to only be dating people, we need to only be staying with people and choosing people who we can accept 100% for who she is. And the more that we can accept someone for 100% for who she is, the safer she's gonna feel with us. And that is so important because having beautiful love requires that we feel safe with each other, that we can be vulnerable with each other, that we can show our, our full true selves to this person and that we're safe with her and that she's safe with us. And in neuro-linguistic programming, they talk about a concept called you go first, which means that if we want someone else to 
feel a certain way, the way we can help them feel that way is if we make ourselves feel that way first. So if we want someone to be excited, we can act really excited. And if we want someone to be moved emotionally, we can bring ourselves to a place where we're moved emotionally. And in the same way, if we can accept someone 100% for who she is, then she can accept us for 100% who we are. When we're in a state of acceptance, we can help the other person also be in a state of acceptance. And the more that we can accept the other person for who she is and the more vulnerable we can be together, the more happy we will be together and the longer our love will last and the more beautiful our love will be as it lasts. So the first pillar for making love last is accepting the woman we're with completely for who she is. The second pillar for making love last is choosing love. And this is something that we do both on the inside and on the outside. There's an inner game of choosing love and there's an outer game of choosing love. The outer game of choosing love has to do with the way that we respond to the woman we're with when she tries to get our attention. All humans try to get each other's attention. Any, you walk into any elevator and there's someone standing next to us and half the time they make a comment whether about the weather or they'll ask what floor, even if you're perfectly capable of, of pressing the floor yourself. There's, people like to interact with each other. People like to have each other's attention. It's a natural thing. As humans, if we're around another human, there are species, we like to get each other's attention. And when there's someone we love, when we're with someone who we love, she's gonna wanna get our attention. And according to John Gottman, who is a famous researcher on love, who literally just by observing couples for a few minutes is able to predict whether or not their love is gonna last, what he says is that the entire answer to the question of whether or not that, that couple's love is going to last is contained in the way that they respond to each other when they try and get each other's attention. He calls those bids. The little things that we do to get the other person's attention, he calls a bid. And the way, the extent to which we honor the person that we're with, if she says something, if we give her the respect of just acknowledging that she said something and saying, oh yeah, or uh-huh, or you know, showing that we heard her and that we honor her as opposed to either ignoring it or sort of scoffing or, or you know, acting annoyed or, 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 or maybe defensively answering back or making fun of her or acting with contempt. The couples that do that, that don't honor the person that they're with when she tries to get our attention, that is a relationship that, according to research that's doomed for failure. So a lot of people think that love has to do with making these grand gestures or buying extravagant gifts or taking them on lavish vacations. But actually, it's, it has to do with the littlest, teeniest moments, the little exchanges that people have with each other where we try and get each other's attention. And it has to do with how much we honor each other moment by moment and how much we give each other the attention that we want. Also, in the same research, they talk about the way that we respond to each other during fights. If one person is trying to de-escalate a fight, you know, one person's mad and the other, whether it's by touching her, touching each other or, uh, or, or making a little joke or making a little face or trying to de-escalate tension as it builds, the more we notice when our partner is doing that and allow her to soothe us and allow her to help to allow us to de-escalate the fight, the more we accept those uh, attempts at repairing any fight, the more we accept them, the more we can make our love last. So really the outer game of choosing love is about giving our partner the attention that she tries to get from us in a way where we're turning towards her and we're honoring her and respecting her when she tries to get our attention. And also really noticing when, if there's tension building up and she tries to deescalate or she tries to repair fights by doing little things just to get us to sort of be soothed the more we can let her soothe us is really gonna be a determining factor in whether our love can last. So that's the outer game of choosing love. The inner game of choosing love has to do with the thoughts that we choose to think about our partner. Because at all times, we have the power to choose where we put our focus. We have the power to choose where we put our thoughts. And moment by moment, it's up to us whether we're focusing on the things that we're grateful for and the things that we think are adorable about our partner and the things that we like about her, or we have the choice to think about what annoys us about her or what she didn't do that we wanted her to do or what she's doing that we wish she wouldn't do or all the things that we were mad at that she's not 
that she's not seeing the way we want her to see or whatever it may be. We have the choice at every moment to focus either on what we love about the woman that we're with or what we dislike about the woman that we're with. And the more that we choose loving thoughts about her, the more that we're choosing to appreciate her and be psyched about her, the more it's gonna feel good for her to be around us because it feels good to be appreciated and it feels good to be around someone who's psyched about us. And so the more we give that to our partner, the more happy she's gonna be being around us and the more she's gonna feel positive things about us because just like in neuro-linguistic programming, you go first. We can create a state where the, dominant, where the predominant thoughts that we have about each other are positive. And that's something that we can create. Because again, love isn't something that we feel, love is something that we do. And it's up to us. The inner game of choosing love is to be focusing on the things that we love about her. So that is the second pillar of making love last. And the third pillar for making love last is about taking responsibility. Because at the end of the day, we have total responsibility for the way that we behave in this lifetime. At any given moment, if we were watching ourselves on a movie screen, would we be clapping for ourselves? This is something that Annie Lala talks about a lot. She's my favorite love coach and I love how she talks about it. She says, if you were sitting in a movie theater, sitting next to you and all of your past and future selves and everyone that you love and respect, and you were watching yourselves on camera, would you be clapping for your behavior? As we go through life, it's important for us to be aware of ourselves, aware of our thoughts, aware of our actions, aware of the things that we're saying, aware of the ways that we're interacting with people. It's called present moment awareness. And present moment awareness, having an awakeness in the moment as we go through life, is really the, the way to have the greatest amount of power in this lifetime. When we're not aware of how we're behaving and we're, and we're kind of asleep at the wheel or we're just reacting or we're totally buying into our thoughts and we're not aware of the, of the moment as the moment is going by, the more we lose awareness over ourselves, the more we lose our power. Because the truth is that we are not our minds. Our minds go crazy. Our minds tell us, uh, our minds tell us fearful thoughts. Our minds make us paranoid. Our minds make us feel like other people are judging us. Our minds project our own worst fears onto other people. If we're constantly believing our minds, when we're not aware of the moment, then we're, then we're stuck in our minds. And when we're stuck in our minds, then we're not available to be our best selves. And we're not paying attention to that very important question of whether we'd be clapping for our behavior if we were in a movie theater watching ourselves, sitting next to not only us right now, but all of our past selves, all of our future selves, and all of the people we respect. Self-esteem has to do with as we observe ourselves behaving in this lifetime, are we proud of the way we're showing up? And the answer to that question is 100% our responsibility. And when we have low self-esteem, when we're not proud of the way that we're behaving, when we're not behaving in a way that we'd be clapping for ourselves if we were watching with our current past and future selves and all the people we respect, when we wouldn't be clapping for that person we're seeing on the screen, then that lowers our self-esteem. And when we have low self-esteem, it's easy to blame our partner. It's easy to be in a bad mood. It's easy to take things out on her, but the truth is it's our responsibility. It's our responsibility in this lifetime to be awake and aware of our behavior, to be working towards being a better person, and to be taking responsibility for ourselves, to be taking responsibility for growing into a better person, and to be taking responsibility for the three pillars of making love last, taking responsibility for accepting the person we're with for who she is, and for choosing to love her, and for choosing to grow into a better version of ourself. Really, Love is the greatest thing in the world. Relationships, as we invest in them, the longer a relationship lasts, the more beautiful it becomes. Because relationships, as they last, and as two people invest in each other, and as you get through fights and come to the other side of it and fall back in love with each other again after that, the more a couple does that, the more a couple grows together through the years, the more you can rely on each other, the more you can rely on the relationship, the deeper it becomes, the more vulnerable you could be with each other, the more you know each other. This is what makes life worth living. This is the thing they write love songs about. This is what you make movies about. This is what, this is what has held families together. 
together, this is what has perpetuated the human race for as long as there have been humans. Love is literally the fabric that binds us together. And so the ability to be good at relationships is one of the most important skills we could ever have in our life. And these are the three pillars. And no matter who we're with, it's an amazing opportunity to practice these three skills because anyone we're with, they're either the one, as Annie Lala says, or they're practice for the one. And, every, and we deserve it. We deserve to have that practice because if we can do all those things, then the quality of our love will deepen and that is the most worthwhile endeavor that we can have as humans. So if you're in a relationship, I hope that it just gets more and more amazing every day together and I'm so happy for you. And if you're not already in a relationship, then soon you will be. So it's important to know these skills because as queer women, it doesn't take a lot. The minute that we find someone we want who wants us back, that's when the relationship starts and that's when you're gonna to need to know these three pillars because you owe it to yourself and you owe it to her and you owe it to the relationship to make it as beautiful and as epic as possible. And I hope that you do. And until then, just keep remembering that hot lesbians are everywhere, that love is real, and that the woman of your dreams is on her way into your life in perfect timing. And I will see you in the next video.